Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. It is a, um, I don't even know what day, what day is it on the Gregorian calendar? Fourth day. Fourth oh, day? Oh, for us. For uh, us, this is the second month. We are on, uh, fourth day. on fourth day. You know, it's a, it's the first day of the fifth month on the Gregorian calendar, on our calendar, the Zadoki calendar, for anybody that is on this calendar. We are on the fourth day of the 13th month, or 13th day of the second month. So fourth day, second month, 13th day. All right. Um, and for those that are celebrating the second Passover, it's tomorrow. Okay, and for those who missed the very first Passover and who were unclean, were unable to make it through, um, I guess tomorrow is that Passover day for you guys. Um, says Mr. Cole, because I didn't look. Okay, all right, guys. So this is Yah's scriptures real quick. I'll blow through this. Um, guys, this is how you can get a very, very, very nice scriptures. Um, that is 1.4 million words, a little bit under that. It is, um, it's a huge book. It's 103 books complete on this. It has the Apocrypha and everything has a restored name of our creator. And as you can see, the name of our creator is on the front of the book. The name of the son, his son, our Messiah, is on the back of the book and these books are uh, available now and a hundred percent of all profits of everything go back into prisoners and so if you are able to order one of these books we are able to get one full scriptures into our brothers and sisters in chains and so guys this is a very uh, incredible value to anybody that loves the word of Yah because this is the best value you'll find anywhere that is available and if you can't afford it, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, no problem whatsoever. And last month in April, I hate to say that, that month name, we did over 1,000 downloads of Yaz scriptures. Over 1,000. Between three different sites that we have, um, we were able to give away 1,000 free scriptures. And that is absolutely amazing. And imagine the people, you know, if you could get, you know, 50 of those people to actually read them. Um, that would just be simply amazing. So these are all available free of charge. It's in the description below. Uh, the very, this is revision six of both of our versions here. And this is the final version that is in the book. And for those who want the eSword, uh, eSword is below as well as a, another uh, PDF that we have that we have produced, which is called Traditions of Men. It's all available free of charge. If you guys would like any of the small books on Amazon, here they are. Um, you people like the small books and people need individual books, especially the guys in prison. So if anybody out there wants to, say, order 20 of these and send them into prisons, we can get them in to prisons. And there's a lot of these short stories and small books that can go all around the prisons for years and years and years. And so these are available right there. All right, uh, gentlemen, uh, Eli, I think you're going to give me a uh, breakdown of what has happened to this point. We are in the land of Yisrael. We are with a two tribes of Yisrael who are all um, still joined up right now. Um, those days are coming to an end, but where are we at and where are we going? Um, Solomon's been crowned king. He, David told him to kill uh, some people who uh, upset David. David didn't like, and then he did that. A couple other things happened, then, we, then Solomon started building the house, he built the house of Yahuwah that took seven years, and then he, and he built his house, which took 14 years. It's 13, wasn't it? I think it was it's 13. 13. I thought it was 14. It says, and Shalomah built his own house for 13 years, oh. and he completed the entire house. Maybe it's 14 after he did stuff, but no, it's 13 is what scripture said. All right, what else? Uh, that was it. That was that's what, it? That's, that's all you have? That's the same stuff Jade always says. What do you want? Well, what do you mean? Uh, that's <laughs> hoping that you give me like a whole different uh, breakdown. Anything else? Um, oof, nothing? Oh, man. All right. Well, I guess we shall begin. All right. Jay, did you have anything? Yeah, one second. All right. Well, I can't. Uh, all right. Here we go. Jay, Jay's back to the table. He was, he was off. What else did you have? Uh, Solomon ended up building a house for Yahuwah. And then he hey, also, hey, that's what he said. Did you say that? He I didn't it. hear him say that. Before. Did you have anything else? It's the same stuff you always say. No, I don't think there's anything else. Oh, great. All right. That's all that's happened so far in this eight chapters. All right. Thanks for paying attention. Here we are. Uh, First Kings, Malachium 8. Then Shalom assembled the elders of Yisrael and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Yisrael, to sovereign Shalom in Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah from the city of Dawid, which is Zion. And this is a huge thing because um, I'm sure they all had heard stories of their dad 
um, when he was trying to move this and it uh, the 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 cart stumbled and um, who was it that grabbed a hold of it? Mm, what was his name? It was it wasn't Uriah, but it was something. Uzia. Uzia, yeah. Uzia. Uzia. Oh, Miss Nicole from out of field comes in and saves everybody. Okay, um, Uzia. So everyone's tripping out, right? Probably at this point, hoping they're going to be able to make this trip correctly without dropping this. Maybe they just Levi's carry it. Maybe, maybe it should be uh, carried as ordained. Okay, and all the men of Israel assembled to Sovereign Shalom at the festival in the month of Aethium, which is the seventh month. And again, we don't have months names in this stuff. I don't. I, Kings is like one of the bigger. Uh, I think this is one of the first books that like starts putting all this Babylonian um, naming system in there. Um, there is no month. Ethium, right? It's seventh month. You know, it's like first day, second day, third day. We don't have days of the weeks or anything like that. Our creator gave us day uh, numbers. Okay. Three. And all the elders of Yisrael came and the Kohenim took up the ark and brought up the ark of Yahuwah and the tent of appointment and all the Kodesh utensils that were in the tent. And the Kohenim and Luites brought them up. And Sovereign Shaloma and all the congregation of Yisrael who had assembled with him were with him before the ark, slaughtering so many sheep and cattle that they could not be counted or numbered. And the Kohenim brought in the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah to its place, into the speaking place of the house, to the most Kodesh place, under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread two wings over the place of the Ark, and their cherubim covered over the Ark and its poles. And those poles extended so that the ends of the poles were seen from the Kodesh place, in front of the speaking place, but they were not seen from outside, and they are there to this day. There was not in the Ark only the two tablets of stone which Moshe put up there at Korab, where Yahuwah made a covenant with the children of Yisrael when they came out of the land of Mitzrayim. And it came to be when the Kohim came out of the Kodesh place that the cloud filled the house of Yahuwah. So the Kohim were unable to stand and perform the service because of the cloud, for the esteem of Yahuwah filled the house of Yahuwah. Okay, what do you guys make of that? Anything? Uh, so that's very similar to um, when Yisrael was in, uh, going out of Egypt, they had the cloud, which... They had lead them to another cloud is sitting in their midst instead of moving. It sits with them at all times. You think it'd be a little sketchy, like weird, having this cloud come down I don't, and be, I don't people would be esteemed? I think they feel like they have power because Yahuwah is with them. Because they know if they know if they study from the Torah, they know the cloud is Yahuwah is with them. He's leading them. So if the cloud is just in their midst, they Yahuwah, they can't be like hurt. Yep. All right. That's good. You like you paying attention? You look like you're almost asleep. Are you asleep? No. Are you going to wake up for this one? Are you paying attention? Yeah. Are you reading with me? Mm, thou shalt not tell lies. That's good. Glad you didn't say anything. Okay, 12. And Shaloma said, Yahuwah has said he would dwell in the dense cloud. I have indeed built you an exalted house, an established place for you to dwell in forever. And the sovereign turned around and Barak, all the assembly of Yisrael, while all the assembly of Yisrael was standing. And he said, Barak be Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael, who spoke with his mouth to my father Dawid, and with his hand has filled it, saying, since the day I brought my people, Yisrael of Mitzrayim, I have chosen no city from any tribe of Yisrael in which to build a house for my name to be there. But I chose Dawid to be over my people, Yisrael. And it was in the heart of my father Dawid to build a house for the name of Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael. But Yahuwah said to my father Dawid, Because it has been in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Only you do not build the house, but your son, who is coming from your loins, he builds a house for my name. Now Yahuwah has established his word, which he spoke, and I have been raised up instead of my father Dawid, and sit on the throne of Yisrael, as Yahuwah promised, and built a house for the name of Yahuwah, Elohim of Yisrael. And I have appointed there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of Yahuwah, which he made with our fathers, when he brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Shalom stood before the altar of Yahuwah in front of all the assembly of Yisrael, and spread out his hands toward the Shamaim, and said, Yahuwah, Elohim of Yisrael, there is no Elohim in the Shamaim above or on earth below like you, guarding your covenant and kindness with your servants who walk before you with all their heart, who guarded that which you had promised your servant Dawid, my father. Indeed, you have spoken with your mouth and have filled it with your hand as it is this day. Um, now, we're about to get into some, some stuff that um, it was, it felt a little skittish f for me when I read this. It felt like it was... Um, it felt like a bit Muslim, like if you were doing some Muslim stuff. So I want to see if you guys pick this up as we start reading through this. But it seems to me that, that what he's saying breaks Deuteronomy 4.2. So let's see if you guys can see this. And now, Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael, guard what you promised your servant Dawid, my father, saying, 
There is not to see some man of yours before me sitting on the throne of Yisrael. Only if your sons guard their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. And now, O Elohim of Yisrael, please let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant, Dawid, my father. For it is true, Elohim dwells on the earth. See, the Shimaim and the Shimaim of the Shimaim are unable to contain you. How much less this house which I have built. Yet shall you turn to the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Yahuwah, my Elohim, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you today. For your eyes to be open toward this house night and day, toward the place of which you said, My name is there, to listen to the prayer which your servant makes towards this place. Then shall you hear the supplication of your servant and of your dwelling place, Yishrael, when they pray toward this place. When you hear in your dwelling place, in the Shamaim, and you shall hear and forgive. If anyone sins against his neighbor, and he has lifted up an oath on him to cause him to swear, and comes and swears before your altar in this house, then hear in the Shamaim and act and rightly rule your servants, declaring the wicked right, the wicked wicked, bringing his way on his head, and declaring the righteous right by giving him according to his righteousness. When your people, Yisrael, are smitten before an enemy because they have sinned against you, and they shall turn back to you and confess your name, and pray and make supplication to you in this house, then hear in the Shamaim and forgive the sins, sin of your people, Yisrael, and bring them back to the land which you gave to their fathers. When the Shamaim are shut up and there is no rain because they sin against you, when they pray toward this place and confess your name, and turn their sin because you afflict them, then hear in the Shamaim and forgive the sins of your servants, your people, Yisrael. For you teach them the good way in which they should walk and shall give rain on your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there's scarcity of food in the land, when there's pestilence, blight, mildew, locusts, grasshoppers, when their enemies distress them in the land of their cities and plague them in any sickness, whatever prayer, whatever supplication by any of your people, Yisrael, each knowing the plague of his own heart and shall spread but his hands toward this house. Then here in the Shamaim, your dwelling place, and forgive, and act, and render unto everyone according to his ways, whose heart you know, because you, you alone, know the hearts of all the men, sons of men, so that they revere you all the days that they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. All right, anyone catch anything funny? Yeah, yeah so... Praying towards to the house. Okay. Yeah, so this is something we have never, ever heard of. This is right. something This is something that, um, if you are a Muslim... Right, you pray. I think it's seven times a day towards Mecca, which is that 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 is the thing. But this shouldn't surprise anybody because um, again, according to the Book of Josephus, uh, Solomon was evil from his youth. Like he he it wasn't he wasn't great. Like he was he was in evil forever, and so he was probably hanging out with Muslim women, right, or somebody that was dealing with this this kind of stuff. Because we don't have anything in scriptures anywhere that says we need to face any direction and pray towards this and yet already three times he's like he's talked about this uh facing towards it raising your hands right. towards he, it it isn't like he commands it it's just like nah, he didn't like because he knows we know that yahoo is in that house so it's like yeah. it may be like praying towards and they feel like it gives them more power or something like like y'all will hear them better maybe but. maybe and then maybe maybe it's innocent maybe it's something of that sort yeah i mean but yeah i guess it wouldn't matter which way you pray i mean but if you know yahoo is that way maybe well, is, is Yahuwah that way, or well, is Yahuwah every way? He's, ev he's every way. He's above and He's omni omni omnipotent, and he's also omnipresent, and which means he is anywhere and everywhere at the same time. That is the only way that we can ever account for him being able to um, talk to us all when we're praying, right? Being able to, to pull this stuff in. So Daniel, he also prayed toward uh, Jerusalem when he was uh, in Babylon. He would pray towards that way. Yeah, and, and this is, again... Um, we don't have we don't have any kind of uh, we don't have any kind of scriptures anything to back this up that we are to pray anyway or do anything like that. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, as innocent as it might be, we, we just Deuteronomy four two uh, is it, very important that we do not add to or take away from the Torah. And our Creator, you know, our, is is everywhere. Our Messiah told us when we pray how to pray, and He didn't say get on our knees in a certain direction. He didn't say pray towards the temple because our Creator is in everything. He's in every breath that we take. The Ruach of, of our Creator is in everything. He's in the wind. He's in the rain. He's in the, the everything. And so he's everywhere. And so it's not like we need to, to aim towards a direction to pray to make our, our, our messages heard. Okay, 41. Also concerning a, strain, a foreigner who is not of your people, Yisrael, but has come from a far land for your name's sake. Since they hear of your great name and your, your strong hand and your outstretched arm, and he shall come 
and pray toward this house. Hear in the Shemaim your dwelling place and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you so that all peoples of the earth know your name and revere you as your people, as your, as do your people Yisrael and know that this house which I have built is called by your name. I would, again, I would never say like my house. If I was Solomon, I wouldn't say this house because everything that he did was from his father. It is Yah's house. Um, just like these are Yah's scriptures, right? We didn't write these scriptures. We didn't put... Uh, we, we didn't do anything, right? The, everything that our creator has given to us, the Torah, his laws, his statutes, his commandments, it's all his. It's all his stuff. It's, it's, man should not have any kind of thing for it. Yes, Solomon built a temple. Um, he, everyone built a temple, right? So I don't think Solomon was sitting there engraving stuff with his own hands, right? He, he administered building the temple and all the people did it. Okay. Um, continuing on, uh, did I do 45? Uh, I think, that, yeah, I think you're on 45. Okay, so let's finish off the rest of that. Toward the house, uh, and I just did it. Dad, gum it. All right, going back. Six, or no, where are we at? Eight? Uh, yeah, yep. eight, 45. 45. Yeah, yeah, this is real 45. sensitive. Okay, um, heading back out, 44. Which I have built for your name, then shall cause you here, then shall you hear in the Shamim their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become enraged with them and give them to their enemy, and they take them captive to the land of the enemy, far or near, and they shall turn back into their heart in the land where they have been taken captive, and it shall turn and make supplication to you in the land of those who took them captive, saying, We have sinned and acted wickedly. We have committed wickedness. And they shall turn back to you with all their heart and with all their being in the land of their enemies who led them away captive and shall pray to you toward their land, which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen and the house which I have built for your name. Then you shall hear in the Shemaim, your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you and all their transgressions, which they have transgressed against you and give them compassion before those who took them captive and they shall have compassion on them. And again, here, here's Solomon talking like here, and then you shall pray and shall pray to you toward their land. Um, man, our, our creator's everywhere. He's not, he's not yeah, stuck no, in There's it. no so, command that you said you have to pray a certain direction. This is like Solomon, like, this is, he yeah. feels like if they pray this way, they'll be heard better. Yeah, or they, it's like, he, what Solomon doesn't realize is that his temple is only very temporary, right? This isn't, this doesn't stick around forever. And so all of his advice and all of this stuff, like praying towards a temple or the land of it, uh, it's, it's not biblical. There's no such thing in there. Messiah never gave us any kind of commands like this. We've never seen this in Torah. We don't have it in 103 books of scriptures. It's just, it's just not there. Okay, 51. For they are your people and your inheritance whom you brought out of Mitzram, out of the iron furnace. Let your eyes be open to the supplication of your servant and the supplication of your people, Yisrael, to listen to them wherever they call to you. For you have separated them unto yourself for an inheritance out of all the peoples of the earth, as you spoke by the hand of your servant Moshe, when you brought our fathers out of Mitzram, O Adonai Yahuwah. And it came to be when Shlomo had ended praying all this prayer and supplication to Yahuwah, that he rose up from before the altar of Yahuwah, from kneeling on his knees, with his hands spread up to the Shemaim. And he stood in Barak, all the assembly of Yisrael, with a loud voice, saying, Barak be Yahuwah, who has given rest to his people Yisrael according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good word, which he promised through his servant Moshe. Yahuwah our Elohim is with us as he was with our fathers. He does not leave us nor forsake us to incline our hearts to himself, to walk in all his ways and to guard his commands and his laws and his right rulings, which he commanded our fathers. And let these words of mine, which I have made supplication before Yahuwah, be near Yahuwah our Elohim day and night. To maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people, Yisrael, the matter of each day, in its day. So that all the peoples of the earth know that Yahuwah is Elohim. There is no one else. Let your heart, therefore, be perfect to Yahuwah our Elohim. To walk in his laws and guard his commands as at this day. And these are the same things for all generations. This is not a, this is not a stopping thing. This is for... To, to the end of time, everybody's children's 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 children should know that we need to walk in his laws, guard his covenants as it was back in that day. And the sovereign and all Yisrael with him made slaughterings before Yahuwah. And Shalom brought peace offerings when he slaughtered to Yahuwah, 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. Thus the sovereign and all the children of Yisrael dedicated the house of Yahuwah. 
On that day, the sovereign Kadosh, the middle of the courtyard that was in front of the house of Yahuwah, for there he made burnt offerings and the grain offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar that was before Yahuwah was too small to contain the burnt offerings and the grain offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. And Shalom at that time observed the festival, and all Yisrael with him, a great assembly from the entrance of Kamath to the wadi of Mitzram before Yahuwah our Elohim. Seven days, seven days and seven days, 14 days. On the eighth day, he sent the people away, and they baracked the sovereign and went to their tents rejoicing and glad of heart for all the goodness that Yahuwah had done for his servant Dawid and for Yisrael, his people. Um, it sounds like the last, it's the, the last, the last seven days was a festival day, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you have the great, last great day, uh, Shimni Atzeret, right? Yes, because the uh, Fresh Feast of Sukkot, they're probably all there in so they went. So it sounds like what they did is they celebrated seven days prior to their next feast time, right? You like with me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, anyone have anything? No, not really. I mean, at the end, he uh, kind of brought it back saying everyone should keep the laws and we all need to obey the commands. But yeah. he still has that pray towards the temple thing. Yeah, that, it, it is funny, you know, but, but that's Solomon, right? He knows the laws, statutes, and commandments. As a king uh, or sovereign, you're supposed to write the Torah. Um, it's supposed to be everything about you. And um, he strayed. He strayed with his women. He strayed with his uh, religions. He strayed with all of this stuff. And um, because of his actions and his wickedness, Israel is was never ever going to be the same after him. It's it's his kids. It's just it's it's a mess, and it will never be the same uh, up until this day. In fact, the ten tribes of Israel, the northern tribes of Israel, are gone to this day, and these are the people that we hope that we are talking to. The people that are coming out of Babylon, the people that are understanding the laws, statutes, and commandments were meant for all generations, for all peoples, for all creeds, races, times, everybody at all times. And once we come back in covenant with our Creator. There's a way out of this place, but it's not going to be for those who are not, if, if you're not doing the will of our creator, it's not going to be for you guys. So much love to everybody. We hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and we're out. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.